Apollo 14 was the eighth crewed mission in the United States Apollo program, the third to land on the moon, and the first to land in the lunar highlands. It was the last of the H missions, landings at specific sites of scientific interest on the moon for two day stays with two lunar extravehicular activities. The mission was originally scheduled for 1970, but was postponed because of the investigation following the failure of Apollo 13 to reach the moon's surface, and the need for modifications to the spacecraft as a result. Command Module Pilot Stuart Rusa and Lunar Module Pilot Edgar Mitchell launched on their nine-day mission on Sunday, January 31, 1971, at 4.03, 2 p.m. EST. Time. En route to the lunar landing, the crew overcame malfunctions that might have resulted in a second consecutive aborted mission, and possibly, the premature end of the Apollo program. Shepard and Mitchell made their lunar landing on February 5 in the Fra Mauro Formation, originally the target of Apollo 13. During the two walks on the surface, they collected 94.35 pounds of moon rocks and deployed several scientific experiments. To the dismay of some geologists, Shepard and Mitchell did not reach the rim of Cone Crater as had been planned, though they came close. In Apollo 14's most famous event, Shepard hit two golf balls he had brought with him with a makeshift club. While Shepard and Mitchell were on the surface, Rusa remained in lunar orbit aboard the command and service module, performing scientific experiments and photographing the moon, including the landing site of the future Apollo 16 mission. He took several hundred seeds on the mission, many of which were germinated on return, resulting in the so-called moon trees, that were widely distributed in the following years. After liftoff from the lunar surface and a successful docking, the spacecraft was flown back to Earth where the three astronauts splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean on February 9. The mission commander of Apollo 14, Alan Shepard, one of the original Mercury 7 astronauts, became the first American to enter space with a suborbital flight on May 5, 1961. Thereafter, he was grounded by Meniere's disease, a disorder of the ear, and served as chief astronaut, the administrative head of the astronaut office. He had experimental surgery in 1968 which was successful and allowed his return to flight status. Shepard, at age 47, was the oldest U.S. astronaut to fly when he made his trip aboard Apollo 14, and he is the oldest person to walk on the moon. Apollo 14's command module pilot, Stuart Rusa, aged 37 when the mission flew, had been a smoke jumper before joining the Air Force in 1953. He became a fighter pilot and then in 1965 successfully completed aerospace research pilot school at Edwards Air Force Base in California prior to his selection as a Group 5 astronaut the following year. The lunar module pilot, Edgar Mitchell, aged 40 at the time of Apollo 14, joined the Navy in 1952 and served as a fighter pilot, beginning in 1954. He was assigned to squadrons aboard aircraft carriers before returning to the United States to further his education while in the Navy, also completing the ARPS prior to his selection as a Group 5 astronaut. He served on the support crew for Apollo 9 and was the LMP of the backup crew for Apollo 10. Shepard and his crew had originally been designated by Dickie Slayton, director of flight crew operations and one of the Mercury 7, as the crew for Apollo 13. NASA's management felt that Shepard needed more time for training given he had not flown in space since 1961, and chose him and his crew for Apollo 14 instead. The crew originally designated for Apollo 14, Jim Lovell as the commander, Ken Mattingly as CMP and Fred Hayes as LMP, all of whom had backed up Apollo 11, was made the prime crew for Apollo 13 instead. Mitchell's commander on the Apollo 10 backup crew had been another of the original seven, Gordon Cooper, who had tentatively been scheduled to command Apollo 13, but according to author Andrew Chaikin, his casual attitude toward training resulted in him being not selected. Also on that crew, but excluded from further flights, was Don Izell, likely because of problems aboard Apollo 7, which he had flown, and because he had been involved in a messy divorce. Apollo 14's backup crew was Eugene A. Cernan as commander, Ronald E. Evans Jr. as CMP and Joe H. Engel as LMP. The backup crew, with Harrison Schmidt replacing Engel, would become the prime crew of Apollo 17. Schmidt flew instead of Engel because there was intense pressure on NASA to fly a scientist to the moon and Apollo 17 was the last lunar flight. Engel, who had flown the X-15 to the edge of outer space, flew into space for NASA in 1981 on STS-2, the second space shuttle flight. During projects Mercury and Gemini, each mission had a prime and a backup crew. Apollo 9 commander James McDivitt believed meetings that required a member of the flight crew were being missed, so for Apollo a third crew of astronauts was added, known as the support crew. Usually low in seniority, 
support crew members assembled the mission's rules, flight plan, and checklists, and kept them updated. For Apollo 14, they were Philip K. Chapman, Bruce McCandless II, William R. Pogue and C. Gordon Fullerton. CAPCOMs, the individuals in mission control responsible for communications with the astronauts were Evans, McCandless, Fullerton and Hayes. A veteran of Apollo 13, which had aborted before reaching the moon, Hayes put his training for that mission to use, especially during the AVAs, since both missions were targeted at the same place on the moon. Had Hayes walked on the moon, he would have been the first Group 5 astronaut to do so, an honor that went to Mitchell. The flight directors during Apollo had a one-sentence job description, the flight director may take any actions necessary for crew safety and mission success. For Apollo 14, they were, Pete Frank, Orange Team, Glenn Lunny, Black Team, Milt Windler, Maroon Team and Jerry Griffin, Gold Team. Prime and backup crews for both Apollo 13 and 14 were announced on August 6, 1969. Apollo 14 was scheduled for July 1970, but in January of that year, due to budget cuts that saw the cancellation of Apollo 20, NASA decided there would be two Apollo missions per year with 1970 to see Apollo 13 in April and Apollo 14 likely in October or November. The investigation into the accident which caused an abort of Apollo 13 delayed Apollo 14. On May 7, 1970, NASA Administrator Thomas O. Payne announced that Apollo 14 would launch no earlier than December 3, and the landing would be close to the site targeted by Apollo 13. On June 30, 1970, following the release of the accident report and a NASA review of what changes to the spacecraft would be necessary, NASA announced that the launch would slip to no earlier than January 31, 1971. The crew of Apollo 14 trained together for 19 months after assignment to the mission, longer than any other Apollo crew to that point. In addition to the normal training workload, they had to supervise the changes to the command and service module made as a result of the Apollo 13 investigation, much of which was delegated by Shepard to Rusa. Mitchell later stated, We realized that if our mission failed if we had to turn back that was probably the end of the Apollo program. There was no way NASA could stand two failures in a row. We figured there was a heavy mantle on our shoulders to make sure we got it right. Before the abort of the Apollo 13 mission, the plan was to have Apollo 14 land near Litro Crater, in Mare Serenitatis, where there are features that were thought to be volcanic. After Apollo 13 returned, it was decided that its landing site, near Cone Crater in the Fra Mauro Formation, was scientifically more important than Litro. Landing at Fra Mauro would also allow orbital photography of another candidate landing site, the Descartes Highlands, which became the landing site for Apollo 16. Although Litro went unvisited, a nearby area, Taurus Litro, was the landing site for Apollo 17. Apollo 14's landing site was located slightly closer to Cone Crater than the point designated for Apollo 13. The change in landing site from Litro to Fra Mauro affected the geological training for Apollo 14. The astronauts had been taken to volcanic sites on Earth, afterwards, they visited crater sites, such as the Rise Crater in West Germany and an artificial crater field created for astronaut training in Arizona's Verde Valley. The effectiveness of the training was limited by a lack of enthusiasm shown by Shepard, which set the tone for Mitchell. Harrison Schmidt suggested that the commander had other things on his mind, such as overcoming a 10-year absence from spaceflight and ensuring a successful mission after the near disaster of Apollo 13.